Okay, hello everyone. Here's Matthias from Trello. Today is the 6th of February 2019, and today's topic is how to pick stocks for investments. And yeah, maybe you have before I start some questions regarding stocks or investments. So uh, the topic today is, uh, and I have to highlight this here, is about investments. So we don't talk about trading stocks. We are just talking about investments in stocks. It's a huge difference. And if you don't know what the difference is between investment and trading, then please ask the question in the chat box and I'll be happy to answer. Okay, then let's start. What is on today's agenda? Today's agenda is market capitalization, dividends, continued uh, continuity of dividend, company and product known, 52 weeks high, 10 biggest companies, Ken Slim, and side fact about reinvested dividend. Yeah, this is today's agenda. And I think this webinar will take 30 minutes, 25 minutes, something like that. And of course, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer all your questions. And this could lead to a one or two or three hours webinar. It depends on your questions, guys. OK, then let's dive into the topic. Um, we want to find the right or the best stocks to invest in. And for this, you need to have a kind of filter, or in general, filters because only one filter is not enough. And maybe you can imagine there are plenty of stocks out there. So let's say maybe we have 100,000 companies, and therefore, of course, we have 100,000 shares to pick. And it is necessary to have filters for that, to yeah, filter it down to just a few stocks, and these are maybe the sweet spots to invest in. If, when I talk about investment, then I mean, in general, um, you buy something and you hold it for at least seven years. So maybe 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, whatever. So at least for a several years and not for only a few days or weeks or months. So this is the difference between trading and investment. And we want to find stocks for investments today. And one of the filters should be the market capitalization. Um, you should look for big companies. And big, of course, is very difficult to define. So you can define market capitalization as a fixed number. And for me, it's at least $10 billion or more. Yeah, $10 billion or more. Then the big companies, why is this so important? The big companies are often stable and not so easy to shake. So for example, a small company, uh, a pink sheet or a penny stock, for example, with only a market capitalization of, let's say, $5 million, if there a big investor comes in and wants to buy shares for two or three million, then of course he is moving the underlying. He is moving to cause the price of the stock. And this is not what we want to have. So we want to have really, really, really big companies um, and a single trade decision of an investor or a trader or speculator, whatever you want. Um, should not be able to move the market. Yeah, this is the reason why we want to invest in big companies with a big market capitalization, at least 10 billion or more. Um, and maybe you ask yourself, okay, how can I find this? And there are plenty of screeners out there um, at different websites. Most of them are for absolutely free. For example, winfist.com. Or you can use Trader Fox. We are working together with Trader Fox. Trader Fox is a partner of us. And it's a great, great platform. And then, of course, some of the brokers offers you a screener. And there you can screen for big companies. So I have prepared something here in 
Um, just give me a second, guys. No, this is not a thing I want to show you. Yeah, yeah. This is, for example, this is Finvis. And with Finvis, you can, I make this back here to any. Now you can see we have a total number of 7,504 stocks. Yeah, but we only focus on large companies with 10 billion or more. So we can here go to large over 10 billion. And now it comes down to only 683. So we are down to 9% of the start. Yeah, 9%. And now, of course, you can say, hmm, this is pretty much so. Let's say we want to see only the mega 200 billions or more. Then it comes closer to 33 companies, which have a market capitalization of 200 billion and more. Yeah. So this is a, the first filter you can use to find the right stocks to invest in. Any questions so far, guys? Seems not the case. Okay, then I will continue um, with my PowerPoint presentation here um, with my second slide. So it is also important to have stocks with a high dividend because the dividend is a big part of your return at the end of the day. So for example, you say you invest in a stock which costs you $100. And after 10 years, the stock is worth $120, of course, then you earn 20% over all the years. But additionally, if you have a stock or a company which pays you dividends, then your return is much, much higher because the dividend is calculated every year or in the US every quarter in earnings seasons. And this is really, really uh, a good chance to, to boost your return on investment. So the second filter is you should pay attention to the dividend. And the dividend is so important to you. So you can say, and let's go back to the filter I used in the former slide. Stock screener, and let's go back here to large. And then let's say, okay, we want to have a dividend yield of at least 3% or more. Yeah. Then it was 683 before, and now we are down to 204. So the, the target group is much smaller now. And you can go, of course, here higher and say, okay, let's say 4% or more, then we are down to 107. But it is not all about the dividend. Of course, the dividend is a very important part, but um, it is also very important to say the dividend needs to be uh, continuously paid. Yeah. So for example, you say maybe, Let's say an example. I don't know if it's right. Uh, or, yeah, most likely not. So let's say Amazon paid the first dividend this year. And let's say it's 2%. Then this should not be your only, the, the only focus. You should check if the dividend was paid over the last years. And if it's really, really great, then the dividend has increased every single year. And this is the perfect spot to invest. Yeah, you have a large uh, company which pays you dividend. The dividend is paid over the last 10 years and the dividend is growing every single year. Yeah, these are very important filters. So now we are three filters. And there are many, many sites out there uh, where you can check this. And I have here, for example, um, I can show you this homepage right now. Uh, but first, let's have a look at the dividend and the continuously 
paid dividend and growing dividend. This here is McDonald's. McDonald's has paid a dividend per share, uh, per share over the last, you can see here, 13 years and more. So I just um, showed up here 13 years, so don't confuse by all. So it's only here 13 years and McDonald's paid dividend, I think, over the last 25 years or so. And what is interesting here, you can see the dividend per share was growing every single year. Yeah, every single year the dividend is higher than the year before. Yeah, and you can expect that this will happen in the future as well. And for this reason, McDonald's is one of the good stocks to pick for investments. And you can see here also the dividend growth. It's all the time a positive number. So this means it is bigger than the year before. Yeah, pretty, pretty simple. Uh, and you should pay attention to this. Another example, and I want to highlight this here again. It's just an example. You have to find your own spots, your own stocks to invest in. But this here, for example, is Verizon. Verizon has paid a dividend. Here you can see over the last 11 years. And you can see the dividends growing over the last 11 years, single year, year by year. Yeah? It's not much, but of course, 2% every year more than the year before. Um, bear in mind or consider the compound interest effect. Yeah? It becomes more and more and more. And this is a huge part of your return. So, of course, Verizon can increase at the same time from, uh, no idea, um, it's uh, here. The closing price was 54 and maybe you invest in Verizon and Verizon is rising over the next five years to $100. Then you make almost 100% in just the price of the share. But additionally, you get the dividends as well. Yeah, this is very important. Another example here is JP Morgan Chase, uh, a big American bank. And also here you can see, and this is uh, what I want to show you here. Um, the dividend here in this example was paid over the last 11 years. Yeah, you can see the dividend was paid every single year. But here, something has happened. Yeah, the dividend was $1.52. And then in the financial crisis, maybe you can remember, um, the dividend went down by 87%. Yeah? And in the next year, JP Morgan was able to pay the dividend, but on the same level. So the dividend growth was 0%. Then a big, big jump comes. And they, um, yeah, the, the dividend rose from 0.2 to $1, so by 400%. And over the next years, the dividend growth was quite stable. Yeah, this is a pretty good example of what can happen in the past, but it's not happened over the recent years. And you should maybe avoid such company where the dividend was reducing or minimizing over one or two years, because this is most, most of the cases is the reason for that, a mismanagement. And you want to avoid this kind of stocks. And then I have another example, ExxonMobil. And ExxonMobil is a perfect example to show you what I mean with paying a dividend every single year and this dividend was growing over the last 10 years. Yeah, it's not much, 7%, 5 then the good years here, and then it went down a little bit, 7%, 3%, 3%, 6%, which is also fine. Yeah, so please pay attention to big companies, to dividend paid, to dividend paid over the last 10 years, and to uh, increase in dividend yeah four very important points 
Is that clear to you? And maybe you want to know another company, so just give me a stock and I can check if a dividend was paid over the last years and what was the dividend growth. Yeah, I can check this for you. That's not a problem at all. Uh, or you can check this um, in the internet, in the web, World Wide Web. Um, and if you want to know something right now, just shoot it out and I will check it. I see somebody is typing, so I wait for this. Amazon. Okay, yeah, then let's have a look at Amazon. Um, okay, here. This is Fast Graphs. And Amazon, I'm pretty sure, and um, sorry to say that, I don't want to disappoint you, but Amazon has never paid a dividend. But let's check. It's yeah, just a few seconds. I don't know why this homepage is so lame. Um, and then here, yeah, let's check the performance. And you see Amazon has never paid any dividend. And therefore, of course, they don't have any dividend growth. So sorry. <laughs> sorry, Esther. Um, this is not the best example. <laughs> no problem at all. Maybe you have another spot, then just let me know and I will check it for you. Okay, then back to my slides here. Um, yeah, you know, another thing that I would recommend to you is that you only should invest in stocks. Do you know the company and the products? Yeah, let's say Amazon, Amazon, okay, everybody knows Amazon. What is the product of Amazon? Everybody knows that, though this is pretty simple. The same with, uh, let's say, ExxonMobil or JP Morgan or Johnson & Johnson or Walmart. All these companies are well known and we all know the products. So this is an important part, I think, and even better it is if you're using these products yourself. So for example, you love to eat uh, at McDonald's, uh, then of course you should invest in McDonald's because you are a customer and you know everything about this company. Or the same with Starbucks. You love to drink coffee from Starbucks, then um, you should bear in mind to invest in Starbucks because you know the company, you know the products. Um, so this is, I think, pretty important. And let's go back to the overview of the screener. No, this was not the right thing. Here we are. And let's go back here to the screener. So let's go through the first companies. ExxonMobil, I think you know the company and the product. The same with our Dutch Shell, because it's almost the same. Um, Verizon Communication is very uh, famous and well-known. China Mobile Limited, I think this is also a company which is well-known. And yeah, almost every company here is well-known. And of course, this is for a reason. The reason is the market capitalization is, is huge. And for this reason, the company is well known. Yeah, maybe some of them are not so. Um, yeah, Philip Morris, BHP, International Businesses, IBM, Abby. Maybe Abby is not so popular, but it's a, a really, really good company, I can tell you. Um, and yeah, so this is another kind of filter I would recommend to you. Only invest in things that you know and try to avoid complicated stuff. So if you are not an expert or an advanced trader of what is a good example, um, 3D was in the past and maybe electronic cars is not a good example. But I'm pretty sure you know what I mean. 
Okay, there's something in the chat box, and I want to read this first. I wanted to know whether companies would pay a different rate of dividends based on which industry it belongs to. Um, not necessarily, so there is no kind of default or template to say the healthcare pays 2%, the banks pay 3%, and technology sector or the industry pays 5%. Um, this is completely different, and you cannot say uh, this industry pays this kind of different, uh, this kind of dividend. Um, I mean, for example, a beverage industry having a different standard than a company belonging to chemical industries. No, this is not the case. Uh, if there are dividend standards for different industries, we can we compare one company stock to another based on only this criteria. No, unfortunately not. Um, what you can do is, for example, say, um, I only want to invest in an industry, let's say healthcare. And then you can compare different companies from healthcare. So for example, here, GlaxoSmithKline, and you have Sanofi, and you have AbV. Yeah, three healthcare companies. And then you can say, okay, I only take this one with the best dividend yield and I want to avoid all the others. And this is a pretty good approach. You should only invest in one company of an industry and not in um, the best example is here. Let's take the first three companies here. It's ExxonMobil, it's Royal Dutch, and yeah, okay, it's, it's Royal Dutch again. Um, but you, you, you already know what I mean. So let's say you want to invest in the two best and the two biggest companies. Then you have two companies from the same industry. And you shouldn't do that. You should, uh, yeah, diverge your money into different industries to reduce your risk. Now, if you have something from healthcare, bank, consumer goods, and technology, for example, then your risk is pretty well uh, reduced and converged. Hopefully, you know what I mean. If not, please let me know, and I try to explain it uh, in a different way. Okay, then let's go back to the slides. Um, Okay, another very important question you should ask yourself if you want to invest in a uh, company. Do you think that the products the company produce um, are there in 10 years? Yeah? You are able to buy exact this product or products from this company in 10 years, or maybe you say, hmm, I don't think so. Maybe it's a rotten company and it's in general a rotten industry and I don't have a lot of trust in it. So then you should avoid to invest in this company. Even the market capitalization is big and the dividend yield looks great. Um, yeah, you should ask yourself the questions if the company is existing in 10 years or not. If the answer is no, then you should not invest in this company, of course. Okay, then to the next one. Here I have uh, some other methods you can uh, um, yeah, apply to find your right stocks. For example, you can say, and I would prefer and recommend to use my approach. I have explained in the first eight slides, but this are also other methods. And of course, I want to show this method as well. Um, a good approach is, and a lot of banks, insurance, and hedge funds do this, they buy stocks when they have reached a 42 weeks high. Yeah, Because in most cases, there are a kind of rule in the company, in the investment company, hedge fund, insurance bank, or so on. Uh, and this rule says something like, if the company reached a new 42 weeks high, then 
this stock has to be in the portfolio and they buy the stock then. And of course, it's a good approach to do the same because they are successful with it. Another method is, and this is pretty uh, popular, pretty famous, to buy stocks when they have made a new all-time high. Yeah, it's another approach. And the next one you can see here, buy five of the top 10 largest companies in the world. And what I mean by that is, so let's go back to the stock screen huh? and we now take only the biggest 10 stocks. And let's say they need to pay a dividend uh, on, hmm. this depends on you. So you can say, I want to buy the 10 biggest companies in the world. Uh, even they don't pay any dividend. So let's say here any, and then you have this companies here. And it is an approach to say, I want to buy the 10 biggest companies in the world, because it is very, very likely that these companies are existing in 10 or in 20 years. Yeah? Um, the past has shown that if you following this approach just to buy the 10 biggest companies, then you will have success with it. Uh, because these companies are so huge that they will never fail or never fall to zero in 8, 10 or 12 years. So for example, right now, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Alphabet, Berkshire Hathaway, Facebook, Alibaba, Johnson & Johnson, and J.P. Morgan. These are the 10, or let's say Exxon Mobil. These are the 10 biggest companies in the world, yeah? because Berkshire Hathaway and Alphabet is twice in it. So I count it down to 12. So these are the 10 biggest companies of the world. And it is very, very likely these companies are existing in 10 years, even 15 or 20 years. And it's not a bad, it's not a bad decision at all to invest in this kind of companies. And what I have here, for example, the largest US companies in 2018 versus 28. So 10 years are uh, between this comparison here. And let's see what 28 was. 28, Exxon, General Electric, Microsoft, AT&T, Procter & Gamble, Berkshire Hathaway, Google, Chevron, Johnson & Johnson, and Walmart. Yeah? And you can find a lot of these companies in 2018 in the top 10 again. So I'm pretty sure all of these 10 companies are in the top 50 companies 2018 but some of them are still in the top 10. For example, Berkshire Hathaway, Johnson & Johnson, JP Morgan, um, what else? Exxon was also here, and Google. Yeah, Only a few of them are new. So for example, Apple and Microsoft was also here. So Apple is new, Amazon is new, and Facebook is new, and Bank of America. All the others are the same as from 28. So it is a good approach to say, okay, I take the 10 biggest companies in the world or in US and invest in them because they are too big to fail. Was that quite clear to you? Or maybe you need further explanation? Or do you have any questions in the meanwhile? Just let me know. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. Cool. Yeah, then let's go to another slide here. And this is all about putting things together. Um, if you have 
applied all the filters. Yeah, we had this uh, today many many times. They may still be thirty stocks, or let's say fifty or eighty stocks on your list. Then of course you need to make further decisions to create a smaller number because you, it's it's pretty hard to choose just five or six stocks out of thirty, um, and therefore you can just make your search criteria even stricter to further narrow these results. So I did this with the market capitalization. You can say more than 200 billion instead of 10. Or you can say, OK, I take the 10 billions and bigger companies, but the dividend yield needs to be bigger, 4% instead of 3, for example. And then you, you narrow down the results, and you end up with maybe 12 or 13. Um, and in this case, you should take only five to eight companies because five to eight companies are enough to reduce the risk. And you should only have one company from each industry. It doesn't need necessarily to have a company from each industry, but if you have to decide which, for example, here, let's go back to the screener again. No, this wasn't the screener, but here. Where you have multiple companies from the same sector, from the same industry, technology. Yeah, Then you should select only one of them. And maybe the, the bottleneck for you is the dividend yield or the market utilization. So you need to decide this by yourself, yeah? which is more important, the market capitalization or the dividend yield. Or maybe you say, OK, the dividend yield is quite good in all this, but one of these companies had the better continuously dividend over the last, over the last 10 years. And maybe the dividend growth was much better in one of them technology companies. Can you please explain the cancel method uh, on the previous? Oh, I forgot this. Yeah, um, the cancel method. Um, I cannot de uh, describe this in detail because we are talking about investments and not about trading. And cancel is more about to pick um, a kind of lottery uh, to have the big winner. So you end up with, let's say, 10 very speculative uh, investments and two out of ten are the big winners so let's say amazon or tesla 10 or 12 years ago was a share or a stock a company with a lot of potential but it was not sure if it ends successfully or not and this is the cancel method uh cancel yeah is more speculative and not for real investors. And CANSLIM stands for um, a kind of calculation or assessment about the stocks and the company. Current quarterly earnings, annual earnings, new products, stock supply, leading stocks, institutional sponsorship, and market direction. Yeah, if you analyzing all these things together, then you find your can slim companies with a lot of potential, but most of them were not successful. And you need to have one or two big winners to make the whole approach um, yeah, successfully and, of course, valuable to you. So this was just mentioned as a side fact, kind of side fact, but we want to focus on investments today. And CanSlim is not one by one an investment. Of course, it is an investment, but it's more speculative. OK. Hopefully, that answers the question. Okay, yeah, 
A side fact is uh, we have talked about the dividend. Yeah? You get a dividend every quarter or every year. So it depends on the company's country. Um, for example, in the US, you have the quarterly earnings and you get the dividend uh, quarterly. Uh, but in other countries, for example, Germany, you get the dividend only once a year. And then you have much, yeah, let's say less, um, less more money on your account. And then, of course, you can withdraw this money and you can buy or something or, and this is much, much more interesting and the effect is enormously, you can take this dividend money and buy new stocks of the same company from that money. And this is pretty, pretty cool. So I have prepared something here um, to compare things. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, let's make it a little bit better. Um, so let's say here you have an, a stock which costs $100 and you buy the stock 100 shares, 100 pieces. Um, then your total investment is $10,000. Yeah? 100 times 100 is 10,000. And now you, you can say, for example, you have a company which pays you a dividend of 2%. And the dividend growth is 5% a year. And as I showed you before, 5% a year is very conservative. Yeah? We had some companies, and um, let's switch back here to this. Here, the dividend growth was all the time bigger than 5%. Or here, 3%, okay, 2%, 5, 7, uh, 20, 10, 9, 13, 28, or here, 7, 5, 18, 13, 7, 6, and so on. Yeah, You see my approach or my example here is quite conservative. And if you have this kind of dividend growth, then, then your dividend is growing in absolute numbers in money terms every single year. Yeah? You can see this here. You end up after 20 years um, at $5.31. And in dollar terms, you can see this here because we have 100 shares. This amount is multiplied times 100 and we have this here. Pretty, pretty simple. Yeah? After 20 years, you end up with $17,000. You started with only 10,000 and you made more than 70% in 20 years. It is quite impressive, uh, especially if you compare this with your bank. Uh, your bank offers you maybe 0.1% um, interest rate or maybe, maybe less, if possible. But you can use this earned dividend to pay you more shares of the same company. And this is what I have shown here. Yeah? After 20 years, you end up with 190 shares. So you have almost doubled your shares in this company. And of course, more shares pays you more dividend. Pretty, pretty simple. And in this example here, you don't have to invest your own money in this 20 years. You pay all the things from the dividend and you end up close to $20,000. Yeah? And the difference here between this number and this is more than 15%. Yes? You earn more than 15% more money um, when you invest reinvest your dividend into the company and pays more shares. This is pretty simple and pretty impressive in my opinion. Um, and yeah, you should consider to do this. If you earn some dividends someday, then it's worth to think about to invest, to reinvest this money into the same company. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so this was it, pretty much. Any questions left? Do you have anything else you want to know about dividend or market capitalization? Whatever. Just shoot it out. And in the meanwhile, I can tell you, if you maybe have some questions afterwards or you see the recording right now, you can, tag, you can contact us at any time on the support at tradermo.com. And if you want to become a real investor, then we have an investor nano diploma, which you can find here. So go to learntrademo.com and there we have here the premium section and you can here for example say uh, i want to know what the nano diploma is about investors is and here's the investors nano diploma and let me give you the link into the chat box and then of course i will answer all your questions right now uh, right in a minute um, and this for example become a successful investor includes 10 courses, six projects, more than 21 hours of um, yeah, content. And you can get this if you want to become a premium member for free. So for example, here go premium now. I give you this link as well. And if you type in, this usually costs $49 a month. Uh, but currently we have an offer and you can test our service in the first month for just one dollar. And to do so, you have to type in Tradermo 1 in the voucher field. The, the voucher code is Tradermo 1 and then you pay only one dollar the first month. Um, yeah, if you go through this and you, you decide to go for it and you can here choose your premium package, and at some point, for example, you say this, yeah, you have to register first for free, absolutely for free. And if you go to the point in the payment, there you have the opportunity to type in the voucher code. The voucher code is trade number one, and then you pay only one you uh, one dollar the first month. Okay, now back to all your questions you have in the meanwhile. Um, okay. Uh, what is a stock buyback? A stock buyback is if the company decides to buy back their own stocks. So, for example, Apple has uh, 20 million shares in public and decide to buy back 5 million of these shares, then this is a stock buyback. Um, and in most cases, then the, the price of the share will rise because the demand is rising and the supply is not. And yeah, this is a stock buyback. Uh, why do companies indulge in that? Um, yeah, this is a good question. And the simple answer is they want to make their own company more stable and they want to pushing the, the course in some times. And additionally, they don't know what to do with the money. Then in most cases, they pay that they buy their own shares back. Uh, what was the name of the site you used to see the amount of dividend payout, FastGraph? Yeah, this is fastgraphs.com. Um, fastgraphs.com. Unfortunately, this page is not for free, but you can test it for 14 days for free. And this is not a partner of us. This is just a yeah, a web page I like to use for my decisions, but you can find this kind of information for free on other websites. Yeah, um, don't be scared that this is a paid website. You can find all this kind of information for free in a website uh, in the World Wide Web. I'm pretty sure. Um, okay, then I'm just waiting for some other questions because I see somebody is typing. What do you think of Warren Buffett's favorite investing guide, security analysis book by Benjamin Graham and David Good? Uh, dot. Um, I like this, but to be honest to you, 
I'm not the biggest, um, yeah, stocks guy, shares guy. So I'm focused on derivatives. I'm trading a lot of futures and options. And stocks are a very small part of my own trust, uh, trading and investing. So usually I decide what to invest in stocks once a year. And this is um, December, January. So these days actually are the days um, and the rest of the year I'm more involved in derivatives. Okay, any other questions? Ah, maybe another thing I want to tell you is if you become a premium member, and we have here the uh, Signal community and the discussion community. So here, premium EN discussion, you can discuss all your trades, our trades, or just ideas with other traders and with us. And here we are. This is the premium EN Signal uh, channel. And here we show you what kind of trades we are doing. And you can see here in the past, we have bought some stocks. Yeah, this was just earnings trade, but we also bought some stocks in the past. Um, yeah, for example, here. Unfortunately, we bought uh, EA, uh, which was down today a lot, I think almost by 20%. And Bayer, NVIDIA, and so on. Yeah, so stocks we bought for our $100,000 real money account. And you can see here all the things we do with our real money account, with the trading more real money account. OK, then I see somebody is typing. So of course, I'm waiting for this. Uh, thanks for this webinar. I learned a lot to get me going. OK, that makes me happy. That was my goal. Um, thanks, Esther, for this. Flowers, I would say. In Germany, we say thanks for the flowers. Um, yeah, and hopefully my English was not that bad uh, and you could understand everything I want to explain to you. And of course, this recording will be available in the next newsletter and maybe spread a word about Trademo. Uh, I would appreciate it. And yeah, uh -huh. there's another question. Can you suggest the best book you have come across on futures, options, forward, contracts, derivatives. Oh, um, it is really, really hard to pick just one to say that. Um, I have plenty of books about options and futures. Some of them are German, and I'm pretty sure they were not translated to English. Um, but one of hmm, let's maybe you can hear I'm. I'm looking for the right books, but there is no specific book which is pretty good for derivatives. But maybe another thing, um, if you are interested in derivatives, we are offering a derivatives training program, and this is certified by um, Deutsche Börse, so German exchange. And if you, yeah, come to an end and make the final, the final exam, then you are a certified Eurex trader, um, and this is a special offer. And maybe I can show you that. Not pretty sure. Just give me a minute. No. And it's, it's not here. So please contact us under support at trademore.com and then I can answer you in detail. So maybe now it, it takes too long to looking for that in, in detail. Um, is that broken open for someone who's beginner in the world of derivatives? Oh, I would, to be honest, I would say no. Um, the derivatives trader program we are offering together with the Deutsche Börse um is more for advanced traders uh, you need to have at least basic knowledge about options and 
without any basic knowledge about options, then it becomes very, very difficult to uh, go to the exam. And yeah, so to be honest, I would say basic knowledge and options, and then you can do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, have a nice, have a nice evening, Esther. Thanks for joining us. Okay, then I see I'm taking a master degree in financial engineering from the World Quant University. Have you heard? Yeah, I have heard something about that. And I have a student um, and he is taking the same. Um, he, he's doing a lot with, with this kind of World Quant and Quantopia. And there are so many things like that. Um, yeah, I have heard about that. Okay, any specific questions to today's topic, um, picking the right source to invest in? If not, I would say we are pretty close to the end. Um, and I thank you guys for joining us. And yeah, as I said before, the recordings are available uh, very soon. And I wish all of you a nice evening. That was Matthias from Tedimo. Goodbye.